Todd McFarlane's name has become synonymous with two things, Spawn and action figures. Here to tell us all about how McFarlane Toys is celebrating its 30th anniversary, I'm joined by the legend himself, Todd, welcome to FanFest. Thanks for having me, appreciate it. Thanks for giving me the time. Oh no, thank you for spending it with us. Now, let's talk about the anniversary. Now, you've had 30 years of Spawn toys to pick from. Why re-release these specific versions I'm looking at right now, Commando Spawn and Hell Spawn? We try to stay pretty faithful to them. I mean, obviously the packaging obviously is dramatically different. We tried to go back to the retro packaging, which was the all plastic clamshell, right? I mean, you know, currently we use a lot of cardboard, but uh, when we first came out, we were known for our packaging that was all plastic and then had the little flange on the side. We used to do a lot more art on, on the side, that side flange off to the left, but we're currently restricted to how big the package can be by the big retailers. They weren't quite, they weren't quite as picky about space uh, when, I, when I began 30 years ago. Now, obviously we also have this awesome uh, re-release of Spawn issue 311. Can you tell us the significance about that issue and what the, which this third figure is based on? Yeah, so this, so this one actually is a, isn't a re-release, it's a first time, right? So if you, turn, if you turn the package to the side, you'll see the original art that was uh, the cover for, or it's actually on the back, perfect, uh, that was for 311. I did this drawn shortly after the sad news came out that uh, Chadwick Bosman had passed away with his illness. I'd met him a couple times, uh, charming man. I mean, people do stuff on Twitter and put out their messages and whatever else, and I just wanted to do something different. So I thought I'd pay my tribute with an image of my Spawn character, Al Simmons, basically paying tribute to him. All right, so it is 30 years and I need to know from the man himself, obviously you have these incredible re-releases and obviously the 311 figure, but I wanna know what your personal favorites, is there any that you just in the back <laughs> of your mind? And also, is there any figures you would like to see just back on shelves that maybe not, might not be a realistic possibility? Some, a couple of the favorites were we put out a line of, uh, from the children's book, Where the Wild Things Are. And I thought that those turned out, maybe because I, I liked the book so much when I was a child, that I thought they turned out good because we were able to get the cross hatching that uh, the author Maurice Sendak sort of put in his artwork. We did so much detail and that was when we were pretty early in the game and people said, it'll never hold up, Todd. It's not gonna work, you can't do that. And it did hold up. So it taught me that not only could we do detail, but from that point, we should continue to push it to see what we could do even more and more. And then some, you know, people got the hair right where they put enough grooves in it. I, like when they don't put enough grooves, I call it like worm hair. It looks like a bunch of worms instead of hair. So to me, it's just weird amalgamation that I just go there, 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 there. Someday I'll make the perfect figure and I'll put it all together. Now, in addition to Spawn, McFarlane Toys is juggling a ton of collectibles based on movies, TVs, video game licenses. Now, are there any yep. are there any next big properties you're working on? I yep. heard that you might have a line from a certain post-apocalyptic universe on the way. Yeah, uh, yeah, we look we look in all the categories, mostly like you just mentioned them: video game, TV, and movies. Right? Those are the three categories that people seem to get their eyeballs on the most, uh, and we're we're always circling them. Obviously, some of them have already been spoken for by the time we get there. You know, sometimes when you get in the bidding war, we're not the one that they pick. They usually, when we lose those, it's usually because of a bigger company that came in and cash whipped them. I constantly have my radar up, and our people have our radar up to just say, what's the internet looking at? Like, we should go after some of that. So uh, we we have, you know, uh, one of our newer ones is Fallout. And later, in a couple months from now, we're gonna make an announcement about another big, big, big brand. And you you just, you hope they succeed. You hope you can you can, you know, get the fans to get excited. And then if all that happens, then you hope that when your contract runs out, they'll renew it because <laughs> sometimes they don't. So to talk about the line that I think so many of our fans will be excited for, the Fallout series. Now, looking at the TV series, right, is that correct? So we're, we've got the license specifically for the TV show on this one. So we, we get actors' likenesses, uh, which is always fun because I've always told my sculptors, if you're going to get any part right on this figure, it better be the face. Because if you get the face right and everything wrong, people will, will, will forgive you. 
But if you get everything right, but you don't get the likeness, duh, people go, what? I'm not buying this. So um, it's always a dangerous sort of task when you say, let's go for movies and TV and we're doing the real people. If you're doing monsters and creatures, like that's easier. Uh, but once you get into, we're doing some other big star that somebody knows about, you better nail it. Because if you don't, the internet can be a hostile place very quickly. <laughs> Do you know how many figures you've got coming out for the Fallout series exactly? Yeah, I think there's, I think there's four coming out uh, at the beginning. Uh, one of them has like two with the helmet on and with the helmet off. I don't know how much you know about it, but be because of the the suits and the helmets and stuff, you're, you're hiding the stars, the actors that people are relating to. So you can't, it's not really easy to do helmets and toys because you either, to get it right, because the hair, hair won't crunch. And if you've got any kind of padding, uh, that wasn't crunch because you're dealing with plastic on plastic. You either have to have a, a normal size head and a big helmet or you have to have a normal size helmet. And when you take it off, you have to have a little bit of a pee head. So we decided that we would just manufacture two different ones, put them out there. Okay, so let's talk about the movies. We've heard a lot of talk about superhero fatigue in the last few years and Marvel and DC are both pumping the brakes on their cinematic universes. But I wanna know how is the Spawn adaptation setting itself apart? The team we're hoping for right now is that we will kind of be in the right place at the right time and and here's here here's here's why i say that um we all we all have always from the very get-go have always wanted to do an r-rated movie right period done out so just that sets you apart from uh a lot of the uh superhero fare that's out there and i'm not saying that's better or worse i'm just saying it it's different right? You can't do Marvel light. You can't, I don't think you can do Marvel light or DC light and succeed. I, I think people will just go, well, why don't I just get the real thing? So we, we know we have to go to R, but I don't think that there are that many characters that can live in that space and it makes sense, but that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to do something off, off on the edges that will, that will be risky. That's, I guess that's the word. Uh, and everybody's pumping in that direction. And if we do that right when, with the success of Joker 2 and Deadpool, we should be, it should be good timing. Fingers well, crossed. That's, well, the, that's the theory. Well, clearly Jason Blum also thinks it's a, it's a great, great time for a Spawn movie to come. And now he said, like, obviously the Blumhouse version, uh, this will be the Blumhouse version of a superhero movie. But I'm curious, like, how hard are you guys actually leaning into all the, like, horror elements that Spawn, uh, Spawn brings with it? Here's the movie we talk about a lot when we're, when we're talking about it is, uh, and it's an old movie, so maybe a lot of people haven't seen it, is, is there was a movie when I was a kid called Rosemary's Baby. What was, to me, so intriguing about that movie, even as a kid, was that it was just kind of oddish as you're watching it. And then you're just going, I, I don't really understand sort of what's going on. And then, and then you thought you were watching one type of movie. And then by the end, you went, oh my gosh, w w what? Uh, so uh, Scott wants people to, at the end of it, to be sort of frozen in their seats for a moment. It, it, not only with the experience of the two hours, but uh, with the ending and to just go, whoa, and then walk out and then go, well, that opens up a can of worms. Um, and then and then hopefully we come back a couple years later and make the sequel. Well, I mean, since we have you here, just tell us, tell us the whole story. Just give us the whole script as that as you remember it. Just, you can you can let us know. This is a safe space. <laughs> uh, I haven't read it myself, so I can't I couldn't even give it to you. Uh, so, uh, but I could make it up if you, if you guys need to fill time. I, I'm a good storyteller. Yeah. Oh, would I, I would love just a creative, just mind dump from what's, what's in your head for what a Spawn movie would be. And obviously I'm yep. expecting right at the end of, uh, to see something that's just Spawn will return. That's, can we yeah. get that? Is that a promise? <laughs> yes. And, and, and I can't promise that the last line isn't, that'll do pig, that'll do. <laughs> Well, if you want to get your hands on any of the figures you see in front of me, and lots more McFarlane toys, you can find them wherever toys are sold. Todd, thank you so much again, and congratulations. What a wonderful way to celebrate 30 years of McFarlane toys.